What do dogs have to do with Nysora? Well, besides suddenly having lots of animal lovers and dog owners amongst our viewers, in September of 2021, during Nysora's sixth international annual symposium of regional anesthesia in Dubai, we brought one of the leading experts in veterinary regional anesthesia, Dr. Robert Trujanovic. He talked about veterinary local regional anesthesia, and the Nysora delegates were extremely interested in this topic because they got to see so many parallels between veterinary and human regional anesthesia in action. In fact, Dr. Trujanovic even used Nysora's reverse ultrasound anatomy illustrations and animations from the fabled Nysora's nerve block app to illustrate how to perform nerve block procedures in dogs. But did you know that cruciate ligament surgery is more and more commonly done in dogs with a knee injury? Without a surgery, a lot of dogs would have permanent disabilities because their knee joints become unstable. To make things even more interesting, the dogs actually do not have ACLs or anterior cruciate ligament as people do. In dogs, actually the connective tissue of the knee is called the CCL or cranial crucial ligament. So the CCL connects the bone above the femur to the bone below the knee, the tibia. Lots of people and vets still call the dog's ligament an ACL though, it's just easier that way, although the proper name is the CCL. After knee surgery or any other major surgery in dogs, the veterinarian will treat dogs with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications or NSAIDs to decrease pain and inflammation. And many dogs also end up receiving an injection of an opioid to control post-operative pain, even though everyone knows that opioids have bad side effects and pose dangers in dogs such as respiratory depression, nausea and vomiting, just like in humans. Besides, a single administration of opioids results in a very short duration of analgesia and the pain comes back. Fortunately, the use of local anesthetics and nerve blocks is becoming more popular as ultrasound in veterinary regional anesthesia, just like in human regional anesthesia, has become or becoming a standard of care. And we asked Dr. Trujanovic how often these techniques are used in actual practice. Regional anesthesia is currently a hot topic and interest is growing rapidly. The attention to regional anesthesia doesn't uh, come only from veterinarians, rather from patient owners as well. And Dr. Trujanovic recently teamed up with Nysora to develop the very first mobile app dedicated to veterinary regional anesthesia so that these techniques can become more widely available to veterinarians worldwide to the benefit of man's best friend, dogs. Do visit the Nysora's website to learn more about Vet Regional Anesthesia Mobile App and see the complete video of Dr. Trujanovic performing the saphenous nerve block and share this information about the app with your dog's vet. Although postoperative pain management has become an integral part of surgeries in dogs, non-human patients aren't nearly as talkative as their human counterparts and they struggle to communicate the pain they're in. It's also hard to pinpoint the efficacy of an analgesic technique that's being used. We asked Robert about what tools do the vets use to assess the pain in animals? Veterinarians must rely on various assessment tools to estimate the degree of pain. Objective measurements including uh, suddenly increased uh, heart rate and arterial blood pressure, inadvertent changes in the plane of anesthesia, suddenly increased respiratory rate, have been associated with pain in dogs under anesthesia. As stress, fear and diseases may affect these parameters, these parameters become unreliable in conscious patients. Therefore, in the post-operative period, we use pain scales, for example, Glasgow pain scale, that allows us to objective estimate the degree of pain in dogs. In talking to Robert, we learned that animals tend to struggle when it comes to coping with post-operative stress. That's why most pets require sedation or general anesthesia prior to administration of local regional anesthetic. But the benefits make it definitely worthwhile. In this particular case, we will see regional anesthesia in the form of saphenous nerve block being used for intra- and post-operative analgesia in a dog undergoing a TPLO. The advantage of blocking the saphenous nerve instead of a more proximal block like a femoral nerve block is that the patient will not have transient quadriceps weakness after the block. Therefore, 
postoperatively the patient will be able to fix the stifle and walk on three legs with excellent postoperative analgesia. All in all, the next time you take your furry friend to the vet's office for any sort of a more serious operation or procedure, be sure to ask if they can treat their patients postoperative pain with local regional anesthesia. And do share the link to the Nesora Vet Regional Anesthesia app, an immensely useful, practical, and much needed new instructional material. Let's work together to save your dog from living a dog's life after surgery.